welcome to Tech Checker. Today I'm going to be showing you this MCO Plus MKNAF1B metal uh, plastic mount autofocus macro ring extension tubes for Nikon cameras. So let's have a look. So we get a instruction guide and then we get the three tubes we've got a 12 millimeter a 20 millimeter and a 36 millimeter and as you can see they've got the connections for the autofocus connect on and obviously these are going to give you some really nice effects got the Nikon attachment at the end as you can see they're straight through tubes metal on the outside plate plastic on the inside so yeah really good if you're into macro shots um, hopefully you'll be seeing some examples of that in a minute hi today I'm going to be looking at the uh, MCO plus MXN AFI 8 extension tube set now what is an extension tube set well, an extension tube set is a very cost-effective way to get into what's called macro photography. Macro photography is the photographing of small objects very, very close up. The technical description is any photography of anything that projects uh, the subject onto the rear sensor at a ratio of one to one or greater. So your actual object you're taking a picture of will appear on the sensor in the back of your camera and actually the size that object is or even greater. Now there are differences in extension sets. So uh, this is actually the, uh, the MCO Plus one and the differences come in construction quality. So one of the things that you'll actually see in some of these, they'll be made largely out of plastic. Now uh, the major problems with that is you may get light leakage. So these are actually constructed out of a stack of individual uh, extension tubes. So we have a 36 millimeter, we have a 20 and a 12. So if you want to make uh, a 56 millimeter uh, extension tube, you can literally just take the 20 and the 36 and just uh, go with those. Or if you want to make a 32, you take the 12 and the 20. Or if you want to stack all of them together to get the maximum uh, extension, you just put them all together. But going back to the build quality here is in some of the ones that are largely plastic what you'll tend to find is light leakage so what will happen is light will be coming in uh, into your pictures uh, through the sides here and these will totally uh, ruin the picture they'll blow it out they'll make it look washy uh, even worse it, it could appear on one side you could just blow out one side of the uh, of the photo however I wouldn't want to sit my uh, two and a half thousand pound uh, nickel um, uh, 1424 lens which weighs nearly a kilo I wouldn't want to hang this off there uh, if I did <laughs> I'd be holding it uh, both my camera and and that at the uh, the other end so as I say what you get with the extension tube set is a, a set of these extension tubes now what's the theory behind these well what you have with any lens is you have something called a focal length and that is the distance between this lens here and the sensor at the back of the camera. So all lenses have a minimum focusing distance. So if I take this uh, standard prime lens, uh, 50 millimeter Nikon 1.4. Uh, now this lens has a minimum focal distance of, of uh, 45 centimeters. So that means if I try and focus on the object and it's closer than 45 centimeters, uh, it's just not going to get in focus. Even if I override the autofocus and go to manual and use the focus ring, it's just going to never get into focus. So the idea with an extension tube is you extend 
the focal length, it actually means that you can focus closer in on objects. And we're going to look at this later. I'm going to take a photo of Wash from uh, Firefly here. And I'm going to take a photo with that 50 millimeter lens uh, with the standard minimum focusing distance. And then I'm going to add uh, these different focal uh, extension tubes and then show how that focus distance can get much, much, much shorter. Now, one of the things around macro photography that you have to consider is something called the focal plane. The focal plane is how much of the image that you're shooting will be in focus. Now, if I take this standard 50 millimeter lens and I go to that 45 centimeters and take a photo, I'm gonna see a lot in, uh, in focus. Even with the, uh, the lens wide open, uh, with a 1.4 aperture, uh, which is you know renowned for making things in the background look soft and add bokeh uh, to those images, a lot of it is going to be uh, in focus, or at least in soft focus. Now, in macro photography, forget that. Once I put these extension tubes on there, you are not going to see anything. The focal plane is very, very, very small. So that means is when I'm up and tight to an object, just a couple of millimeters of uh, difference uh, in distance between myself and this object could be the difference between focusing on the dinosaurs in Wash's hands and getting his face in focus. So macro photography, a lot of it is about movement uh, of both the camera of yourself, especially if you're taking uh, a photograph of something like a, an insect or uh, a flower, it's very difficult to move those things uh, if, as they're occurring in nature. So, so one good, you know, is take some photos of Wash. So first photo I'm going to take is with the standard 50 millimeter lens, 1.4. As I said earlier, the minimum focal distance is uh, around 45 centimeters. So you can see here, I've got the lens wide open uh, at 1.4. So that'll soften the, the background out. Not on manual. So, so I can't even get in focus here. Look, so I'm moving out, moving out. It's not even looking that. So it's about here. So I might even be out of the frame here. I'm so far back. So I'm getting lots of extraneous stuff in this shot that I don't really want. I want to get the detail in his face and I just can't do that. Yeah, I could crop it down. This is a D610. It's a full frame uh, shot, but then I'm going to have less quality. So let's look at what happens when I put a, an extension tube on. So the first thing I'm going to go here is I'm going to go with the... A lot of people are now going, oh, I've left my sensor facing upwards with all that dust uh, landing in there. That is true. Um, but I'm also going back to have this sensor cleaned. So, so here we go. So what I've got is the 35 millimeter, uh, sorry, 36 millimeter fitted to this 50 uh, millimeter prime. So what I've effectively got here is an 86 millimeter focal length now, rather than the standard 50. So let's look at the, what difference that makes. So first thing I notice is it's completely blurry. So I have to get right in right in here and you may find that it actually confuses the autofocus in your camera and you may have to turn that off so the one thing when you see these images later you'll notice uh, how soft the background is the bokeh of the background and how shallow that focal plane is right so what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to add another extension tube. So I'm going to add the 20 millimeter. So effectively, I'm now taking up the focal length to 106 millimeters. So the one thing you'll notice is there's some nice quick release latches uh, here, the, the standard markings that you have. So, so now 
you know, just that I have to get even, even closer. And even though the exposure metering and the uh, focus works, because the focal plane is so shallow, I'm having to switch to, to manual focus to prevent the uh, autofocus continually struggling as I'm making slight one millimeter movement changes. You can see I'm right up, practically touching, uh, touching him here. So, and finally what I'm gonna do is add the last 12 millimeters. And you, you, you may actually see with the short lens, like a uh, 50 millimeter, that I actually take the, uh, the minimum focus of distance actually back into the camera, uh, which is, uh, Not useful. <laughs> so now what I've got is 50 mil plus 12 plus 20 plus 36. So, uh, you know, I'm well up at over a hundred. Um, so, so pretty much this is 105 millimeter. This is, is greater now, uh, in terms of focal depth. So, so I'm now, I can even see the uh, the aberrations in the uh, in the plastic where it was uh, injection molded. So so that's pretty much an extension tube uh, used there. So, but as I say, there's a cost difference between four to five hundred pounds and twenty to forty pounds uh, in these. So if you've never done macro photography before, get yourself a set of extension tubes. They're a very cheap way uh, to get into macro photography. And macro photography is fantastic. Uh, you can take photographs of all sorts of objects uh, that that people won't be used to seeing that particular view of, that very particular, very close up view. Uh, and I love that. It's called abstract macro photography. Uh, and it takes people a while to realize what it is you've taken a photo of. Sometimes they may not ever realize uh, what it is. So what I'm gonna do now is take a couple of shots so the one thing you'll notice about uh, this lens is uh, it actually has different, different uh, levels of um, focal di distance. So I can actually get quite a way away and still get this in focus. So this lens as a macro lens can be used for normal photography as well with a very soft background, nice bokeh. So I can actually get all the way back here and take the photo, which I couldn't do earlier. I had to get really up close with the extension tubes. So, but I can still get fairly close. It's struggling with the, uh, the focal distance here. So I'm just going to go to manual focus. And the one thing I will say about this is if I turn autofocus off here, the focal plane is definitely about the same as using all of those extension tubes. But what I've got is this flexibility of taking the photo further, further away as well. But like I say, the, the fundamental difference here is, you know, if you've got four to 500 pounds to spend uh, and you know you're gonna like macro, this is the way to go. If you want to find out if you like macro, extension tubes, way to go.